today since Oh, the recording's in progress. Hi, I'm Daphne Stevens. I'm here in Lafayette, Louisiana, and we're going to paint white orchids today. Um, our goal is, is, this is the first part one, and our goal today, let me show you the finished, and I will switch when I start painting to an overhead camera so you can see like you're looking right over my shoulder. Um, and I'm sure most of y'all have seen this, and I can put it up close. Uh, it does have a border, which we will, con on part two, that's when we're gonna cover this. You can get this in two fires. I'll explain if you need to get three fires in, but part two, we're gonna cover, cover it. But today, our main goal, this is what we're going to try to achieve today without the mother pearl border. You don't have to do that. I'll get into that. Um, you can save that for another fire in between before we get to part two. Um, you can actually put it over the texture, but the main thing is this part right here. And I have another plate. I will switch to the overhead camera and then we can get started. Um, must give me a second here to the webcam and let me see the view. I'm gonna, so I can see, there we go. I'm trying to make me bigger here. Um, that way I can make sure I'm in focus since everybody's muted. No, speaker. Okay, I'm, I'm here. I know y'all see me, but I want to put it a little bit bigger. No, got it. Hmm, I don't know why I see um, Banu's thing. I want on oh, me. Let me see if I can do that. Okay, still learning, y'all. Okay, there we go. I can see me, my view now to make sure the cameras and everything's in the right uh, frame. I want to make sure I'm in frame. Let me adjust this a little bit. Sorry, y'all. I want to get y'all busy. Okay, am I in frame here? It was in frame last night with my Zoom. Okay, there we go. And um, it's, if y'all can't see me, if I get out of frame or something, I know Suzanne cannot communicate. So I don't know if you would want to unmute Deborah, Suzanne, um, it's up to you. I know she can hear me. Um, and I'll keep going or because I will be looking up. I don't know about the captions and everything. What I prefer, I'm just gonna jump right in. Um, I sent you a list of colors. I try to keep everything limited. I'm gonna give you all two options because uh, I try to teach uh, beginner level, intermediate, um, just kind of go at your pace. I try to get as much painted in one far, uh, one painting session as possible. But uh, sometimes if we're, we're uh, having a very complex uh, subject, I underpaint the leaves. But we're going to start with the leaves in the background. And I'm going to go into some Chateau Green. And I'm just going to, I like to paint wet on wet. So for the beginners, you can just block in all your, um, background leaves with green. But I prefer for myself to do wet and wet where I do a shaded load, which is going into your green and side loading, like a shaded load into darker green and get my shading done in one shot. You can save this for another fire. It's just whatever you feel comfortable. But I do encourage my students to practice the wet and wet. So I'm just gonna block in leaves. I think it's kind of an easy, I'm getting out of frame here. That's one thing you have to practice when you're, um, you have to keep in your zone. And I don't know about y'all, but it has been over a year. I've been painting a lot, but it's been over a year since I've taught seminars and I miss it.
a lot. And I'm just going to block that in and I'll go back and shade. And of course, there's going to be some refining. I'm not going to worry about going over those lines. That's another thing I rarely do is paint with a tracing or a line drawing. I do most things freehand, of course, with a portrait. I'm going to, I am definitely use my line drawing to get my proportions and everything, but I have really worked towards painting freehand. And from photographs, I think the best um, advice I'd ever gotten was to have uh, the subject with an iPad. And now that I have my monitor in front of me, I'm definitely going to use that but with an iPad taking a picture rather than a, a photograph, you can zoom in on those details. And I like to paint very realistically. So that has been an excellent tip. I think Marcy um, showed me that. I'm sure there's other people that do it, but that was like one of the best, um, best pieces of advice or techniques I ever had. And I use it. And it saves a lot of time bringing reference pictures, especially we do a lot of going back and forth to the camp, <laughs> the baby house. And um, you can only haul so much stuff. I have some uh, painting things there, but um, if I have all my reference pictures on my iPad, that is a lot less that I have to haul. And I'm not worried about messy. I Another tip I learned from Mary Gosden, took a seminar with her. These pointy Q-tips are wonderful. Of course, you can use your um, wipeout too. They do live a build up. You do want to paint not too, not too wet. I do have my students check and make sure it's dull. If they are painting too wet, we can have drips. I paint with a semi-open medium. Um, in my classes, I, I recommend you can paint with whatever medium is comfortable for you, but just make sure it doesn't set up or dry, that the teacher cannot adjust it. I try not to do too much on my students' pieces. I want them to be their own, but sometimes you just need a little um, correction here and there. So that's how I do my wet on wet. Again, um, if you are more comfortable, you can just block in your leaves with that bright green. I like a bright chatter screen. Um, another thing that I do, I think that everybody, no matter what colors you use, you just should have a basic palette or at least know what your colors are. You need to know how bright your greens are, how your values, you need to have know um, your light, medium and dark values and, and contrast, but you need to know what fires on your palette, what, what your colors do. Um, and then once you get familiar with that, you can paint just about anything. Whole nother skill level, color mixing. I'm lucky I learned that doing hair 39 years. <laughs> uh, color mixing, it kind of transitions right into painting. Uh, it's the same color theory. And uh, so that's helped me a lot, along with a bunch of other teachers along the way. Again, you do not have to do the wet on wet, but I think um, it's a wonderful technique to learn. Another thing, teaching, you can paint all day long, but when you have to, explain what you're painting. Whole other side of the brain, I was told. Your left side, your analytical side has to explain and then your, your creative brain. And so you, you're fighting uh, constantly. There's a constant battle going on, uh, the back and forth. That's another thing to get used to. Okay, I'm just gonna do like a little C shape here. I noticed that in the orchids that the 
leaves are very, very similar to, um, where's my words here? I'm trying to think the, uh, well, I can't think of that flower. Um, got it, iris, iris leaves. Tip, technically, um, orchids, and I've studied orchids. I uh, was able to go to a couple, well, one orchid show that was phenomenal in Baton Rouge years ago, and tells you how long ago that was. Um, seven rolls of film. <laughs> I love being able to delete um, my pictures that I don't care for. Um, it's just, it's just wonderful. But I saw some of the weirdest, most creative, unusual looking orchids I've ever seen in my life there. They were very interesting. Letha also grew, and I'm not even going to pronounce that. I'll tear it up with my Cajun accent. Um, but she grew, uh, I'll show you a picture later. If we have uh, time, I'm going to try not to go too much over. Again, I'm not worried about, I refine all my, my uh, strokes, put it in with a broom and finish it with the needle. That was one of the oil painting, oil painters, Helen Van Wyck. She would start with a hot mess and then refine it. So I am blocking, block in and then go back and refine is I find the easiest way. So I'm gonna clean all that up. Now, this little part down here, technic, uh, uh, typically, um, I kind of, you take some artistic license. With this type of orchid, most of the um, leaves and everything are right at the bottom. And I know y'all see that in your everyday orchids. They're at the bottom and then the orchids are way at the top. Well, that, that just does not make for great composition. So I just kind of compressed it. Um, so typically the base of this orchid would not be right there with those orchids, but it works. Um, like I said, you can take some artistic liberties. Now, if you are doing the double loading, I'm gonna flat load with the chartreuse or your bright green and side load with the dark green. And I, my black green is kind of dead looking. So I like a little bit of sultan in there. And I'm gonna do some elongated C strokes here. And what is unusual, or not usual, you, you start, when you start painting, you don't think about, okay, I'm, I'm painting this, but then you start relating, uh, what else? That's, that's also, uh, painted some hummingbirds recently. And I kind of attack the wings the same way, is um, getting, getting up on that chisel edge and brush control, condition your brushes, uh, learn brush control, take some time, uh, Load your brush. And I try to get as much in on the first bar as possible. But that does take practice. I think on some of my other paintings, um, and I'll, I'll look at photographs and observe. They, I'll, I like to repeat color. So it does have some um, pinks and I'll wash a little bit of pink. You'll see that in my um, original. I hope you can see that in my original. Also, this little part right here reminds me, I painted up a lot of irises and it's almost like, um, where the, the new bud comes out. It's, I'm just taking a little bit of like um, your mid-tone green, wall green, somewhere in that area, and a little bit of pecan. And I'm just gonna get up on the chisel edge and I'm just gonna kind of jam this in there. And that's what it looks like. And this same part of that, it looks almost like some of the iris pictures I've taken. So. Okay, so we've got the leaves blocked in. I can refine this a little bit. Y'all get the gist of it. I'm not gonna do it perfect. You can have time uh, to do that. I will clean this up because we're gonna start working on 
this orchid and it's gonna, if you are painting along, I don't know if any of y'all are painting along, your petals are um, gonna be, your back petal is gonna be pretty much all the same. So you will get to see that. So this is a little different. They have, uh, oh, I need a little shading there. Again, that's just something they could put in later. There we go. Here, you can put it in later. No big deal, but I like to put the background in first. The, the things that are furthest away from me, except for actual backgrounds. Uh, when I paint in porcelain, I will paint the subject and pretty much get that fired. And then, because I may want a background, I may not want a background. And then I can change it from warm to cool and I can play with it and decide. I'm, I'm, I've gotten away from some backgrounds, but I think I'm getting back into them again. It's just, uh, just kind of whatever your preference is. Okay, we're gonna, um, another tip too, I found that if you have different brushes, especially if you're working with, um, we're not working with reds, but if you're working with reds and oranges and then you have uh, contamination in your brush, your reds do not come out as vibrant. So, uh, and also for time, and I do this with my other mediums as well. I'll have my brushes all laid out and I'll have green, you know, ruby color, whatever. Um, especially I'm working with uh, white. So I don't have to stop and clean my brush, just gotta get it done. So I'm gonna start with um, this petal here. In the directions, I think, and in in all, uh, you would probably be painting this with like a white so you can get a wet on wet. Um, you could just do a shaded load. Uh, the paint tends to move a little bit better. Let me grab something, um, another little, have my little, okay, here we go. When you're painting uh, wet on wet, if you have, I'm gonna use a light gray and actually like a blonde flesh, you would probably use be using white or cream, but because we have the lighting in the camera, it's gonna be hard to see. So just know that this gray and this blonde flesh will fire out. I am just doing this right here to show you. And even if I did fire it on my original piece, that is gonna fire down. I've tested my colors. I know what all my colors do. Um, I don't need all these colors, but when you get um, the state sales and things like that, I need to know what, what that those colors are, and I have different charts. So I know that that gray and that blonde flesh is going to be um, fire to a nice light color. But in this one, when I did fire the first. This was white, but if I paint with white for y'all, you're not gonna be able to see it. It's very difficult to see. So I'm gonna go into a little bit of blonde flesh and uh, light gray. And uh, it, so it's gonna look a little bit beige -ier, but when I fire it, it will fire down. And these could be a light cream, but we're sticking with white orchids because once you get to the, um, uh, the spots on them, next week those is just going to matter your shading with the center which I am going to I think you can see it a little bit better I'm going to side load in a little bit of like a neutral gray but I don't like to go in just a gray it's just dead so I um, will pick up a little bit of a blue or sultan and it makes that gray a little bit cooler and I'll do this for pearls or any other kind of white I think you can see that a little bit better and I'm gonna handle those the same way. See how the brush is able to slide because I have that wet on wet. If I was just trying to do a shaded load, it doesn't move quite as well. So I, I like the wet on wet. You 
you can, like I said, it's your choice. You could use a, um, you don't have to use the white. Um, it's, I think it, it'll look nice. But then again, remember, I did use white on the other one, but that's going to fire down so pale, I'm not going to even worry about it. Then I'm going to shade, do a shaded load with gray and blue and Sultan. And I am trying to go at a moderate pace. I'm trying not to go too fast or too slow. But that is going to be an advantage if you are going to paint along later on. I'm so glad this is going to be recorded. And I think when I've taught um, hydrangeas or any other kind of white flowers, students are so scared to get color on. One, it fires down. Two, you have to put some color. You, your porcelain is white. You have to have some color. And it is reflected on the colors around it because white is not white. You get a color picker and you can see on a computer um, and a photograph um, and color pick and zoom in, it's like, it is not white. <laughs> it is a little bit more one of the challenging. I am a talker, so an uncomfortable silence. <laughs> I am only quiet when I'm focusing on painting by myself. And that's probably the only time I'm quiet. I probably, I know I talk in my sleep. <laughs> on some of your petals, let me show y'all the original. Or no, the first fire. I have got some areas that I have blended a little bit of the warm gray with the um, same color here, which is gonna be like a mid to dark ruby. So you're gonna vary it. It makes it so much more interesting. I did the same thing on the oil painting. So, and then afterwards I also did a wash of yellow. Those colors are gonna show through. Um, like I said, it is scary. My students, um, I've taught this seminar several times and they're, I'm like more color, more color. White is not white. It really pushes back after firing and you get all more details and more depth in the rest of your painting. So um, that's one thing paint learning, painting um, white subjects is, uh, sticker there, I got in there. Um, and your white subjects that is a little bit gonna be a lot more color than you think. And, if you paint enough white subjects, then you learn how much to put in there. Um, very rare that it's gotten too much. Um, kind of push the envelopes on some, but just the only way you're gonna learn that is to start painting white subjects. I hate that Suzanne can't hear me. I don't know what happened. I'm just glad y'all can hear me. I uh, should look up and see, hey, Deborah, you can still hear me? All right. I'll just, we'll just do the way. <laughs> okay, pedal, 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 pedal. Um, when I get to the center, then we'll do a little something different. I would imagine it is hard to Paint along unless you're a really fast painter. Especially something new. Okay, come in here, get that done, and then we'll do something a little bit more exciting here. Deborah, um, you can wave to me. I know you're, you're muted. Can you see the colors and everything okay? All right. <laughs> 
great. Just need to check every once in a while because I'm just having my own little private party over here. I have been, okay, we got to clean this out a little bit. Might want to do that. If I got a little green in it, I would not worry about it because re re repetition of color. Glad I got that out. <laughs> I will probably go back and refine this uh, a little bit later. Um, kind of giving y'all the basics because we've got a lot of petals here and it's the same thing on uh, just about every one of them. Um, this is going to be a little bit different here. I'm just glad we have having good weather. We had a storm yesterday. And, uh, usually we don't lose power here. I would probably not be teaching if we were at the, I was at the Bay House because we lose power, um, everything's above ground. Um, so if the electricity goes out, the water goes out and I don't wanna be anywhere near there. I can do without electricity, but not, not water uh, for a long time. And it does get hot. Okay, so we've got that. Not much refining. I would make the uh, outer edges maybe a little bit more interesting so they're not all stiff and look like, um, I guess like a stiff banana or something. So that uh, can make some of these a little bit more interesting. I do have a line drawing. I kind of play with that um, without drawing, but we need that guideline sometimes. Okay. So I've gone over this, so it, I'll go back on this. We have kind of a unique little okay, layer. I'm looking at myself here. You're just gonna be shading the outer edge here and here. It's got like these little, I'll call these little ears. So um, you're just gonna be shading there. Again, I'm still gonna do with the wet and wet technique where I'm gonna put color and shade it. You can refine that, add a little bit more wash of color on your next fire. But that's where we're going with that. I'll show you on the finished one. See, it's got some washes of color, the same colors you're going to be putting here, which is like, I even put a little bit of yellow green in there, a little bit of shading. But see, these are, these were that dark. But once you put the um, details on it, that color is not that intense. So you have to have some color on your white flowers. Okay, I'm gonna move along. But this is when you play it back in your painting, kind of like a little checkpoint of, okay, what's this? Is this supposed to look like that? Yes, it is. Now I might switch down to a slightly smaller brush. But I like to paint with the biggest brush that can fit in there. And um, if you've got brush control, um, you can work an amazingly big brush in a small area. If it's conditioned, that's the other thing. It's at the end of painting, you're just done. You don't wanna feel like cleaning. Okay, let me find that shape. You could use a Q-tip. Nice, I'm gonna take a look here because I lost my line drawing, which I really don't care because they do have just something like that. Don't want the two the same. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of uh, that blonde flesh. You could use white if you're painting at home. Let's just go ahead and put that here. Because then you're gonna shade and then that will help your brush move and blend. 
and get it done in one shot. I'm still doing a shaded load here. If I get too much, I'll just wipe it out or lift up some color. Okay, I'm gonna put it down here. So if I had a heavy plate, the wheel of a um, maybe a not the band wheel, it's like a plate holder, revolving holder. Again, using the other side of my brain, <laughs> talking and working. Okay. Just defining that. I want to come in with a little wash. You can do this on another fire, um, but I want to add a little bit of that ruby color in there because some of them do have. Just a touch. I'm not get, I'm not overworking it. I'm kind of getting in and getting out. I don't. It's smooth, but it's not um, perfect. Um, I would say it's kind of like a dry brush. What's called a dry brushing technique, and it's something uh, you load your brush and you kind of um, two hairs and some airs, and it something like that see it's kind of messy but when you have that other color it is able to move so it, it gets this neat um, effect not all blended because i guess it's kind of streaky but a control streak <laughs> if you if you will um and that's what i think what makes your paintings look not so um perfect nature has all these i love to go look at um like rose leaves or leaves and they have uh, like a little hit like in your rose leaves of red or a splotch or something it's just not expected um it makes it yours and a little bit more unique i like things like that um in my painting um just the unexpected you might push the envelope on some things take a little artistic license but if you really observe i like to paint from photographs uh, in real life if I can and this this would never stay alive long enough um, but um, if I could even get these orchids they had some really unique ones the other day um, at Albertsons I don't know if they were dyed or what they were like this purple almost black it was just gorgeous might have to go treat myself to some orchids now this little area here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in darker because um, it is, show you that little, you could pen work it in, but I am just going to go back in with gray and then I'm going to wipe it out and then um, use the edge of my wipeout tool to refine that. And then I'm going to use a shaded load. Just, let me see. That's just going to be the technique because I know it's going to be hard on that first fire, something like this to get that uh, that little area. I can't wait to get to this part because that is the fun part. Okay, I know I'm going back and forth, but it is hard to see on this white. So, oops. No, break it before you break it, you buy it. Okay, I am going to just come in there with some gray. Plain gray. And a little bit of a sharp edge there. Then I'm going to do that little C stroke here. I'm going to take a little gray with that ruby color because I want it kind of muted down. I don't want it like really vibrant. I know I'm getting a glare here, y'all. I'm keep checking myself. Trying to check myself. So it's just a little tiny C stroke here. All right. Did I get everything? Okay. Oh, I forgot a petal here. And I stuck my thing in it. That's okay. No big deal. Hmm. Let me just straighten that out. I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, petal back here. And then I'm gonna put the, um, 
whatever that little flap is. I don't know. I should really know my, I used to know all the parts of the orchids, but I don't. And I don't know, uh, I'm sure there's a few of you out there who are pro orchids and know all the technical terms. I don't know them today. I hope I'm not moving too, too much. Getting all dropped here. So I'm going to kind of check in to see if you can see that before I get into that. Oh, we have another. No, that's right. Okay, here's that. That I lost my line drawing, which is no big deal. We have that. Um, yeah, I guess some green under there. Okay, I am going to show you how to do this part. Another thing that's unusual is feedback. It's so quiet. Still there, Debra? Hey. <laughs> but Debra's only one I see. But she has such a friendly face, so I'm happy that you're there. Thanks for hanging in there. I'm gonna do that wet on wet technique. Again, you would probably do cream. You could use this blonde flesh because it fires out a nice cream. It just looks really beigey, but it fires out beautiful. But I am going to put that right there because when I do this technique for this ruffle, I guess, it just, it helps the paint just flow very nicely. And I'm gonna get probably the biggest flat shader I can do, I can get. Okay, sip of water here. And I am gonna take my time and get really a, a good shaded load. I'm gonna spend some time in this loading zone because with each brush stroke, it's gonna, it's gonna walk up that brush and get me loaded without taking a big swipe. Because as you know, you get it on too thick. I'm gonna go into a little bit of black for depth. Y'all can see. Okay, and this is where the fun begins. I love doing this part. Plates get heavy. I'm gonna have muscles when I'm done. I'm gonna get up on the chisel edge and it's gonna be very similar to this with the C strokes. And I am just going to do a bunch of little C strokes and kind of get jiggy with it. Oh, that's so old. God, I'm telling my age right now. <laughs> but you are going to kind of move that back and forth. And I'm up and down. I am doing like this stroke here, C strokes, but very much up on that chisel edge. And this is also the same technique I paint my irises. I'm so glad I remembered <laughs> iris. I couldn't think, isn't that something you can visualize something and the words are right on the tip of your tongue and where is that word when I need it? Um, the iris uh, folds and, and also fabric folds. That's just fabric folds. But when you have that wet on wet, it is just, it just moves. I'm actually going to come up here and some of them have that little split there. So, and I don't want this smooth. I love that texture in there. As long as it's not a buildup of color, uh, we're fine. I am going to turn the plate because you are working that around kind of like a semicircle. So you're not staying in one spot. You are kind of working like in a semicircle. But I am up on that chisel edge. 
and this is where you really want your brush conditioned. Takes a little practice, but it's just a wonderful effect. I'm gonna flip my brush around um, because I want it, this to kind of curve. It does kind of um, grow this way. And I don't want it straight. It just makes it a little bit more appeal. So my shaded part, my color here, it's loaded here. I'm not gonna worry about that part. I am gonna get another brush, clean brush, take me a little bit, um, and blend. And I am like two hairs and some air going from the lighter into that darker. I might see where I could put a little bit more color in there. You can leave it like that. I kind of want to bring a little bit more of that in there. If I mess it up, guess what? I'll just wipe it off and do it again. I'm going to take the corner, like the right corner of my brush and just kind of hit it like that. That will blend a little bit more if you like that effect a little bit um, more textured, that's okay. It's just, it's your piece, it's whatever preference. I don't wanna smooth it out too, too much. Actually, that's a little bit too much. But I just want to take kind of that right corner and bring the color up a little bit. I can do that in another fire, but it's also in the shape that it is going. The other thing I like as well is to put a little wash of yellow while it's wet, I would like a little bit of yellow. My yellow is a little intense, so I tend to mix it with a little bit of white. Just kind of hit. Don't get in there and and uh, the light got out of focus. Pedal putter and play around. I just put it in there and I just got in and got out. As well as if you're going to add washes of yellow, if you have a tendency to really overwork, don't do this now. But if you can get in and get out, you can just put like a little, my my um, um, sunlight, the, I was, well, the lights come in from 11 o'clock for me. I always, almost always, I'd say 98% of the time have the light coming in from 11 o'clock. Rarely do I have it this way, but some some paintings, do require that the lighting comes as long as it's consistent. So I will put the yellow where I think the sun would hit a little bit. It is going to be covered up with those um, spots. So believe it or not, it is going to show. Again, I'm not really messing with that into the gray. I do have a little piece of a leaf here. That's missing, so I'm gonna put that in right now. Put it back in here. There we go, and then there's like this little petal there. So we've got one done. I have no idea how long we've been painting. I could check. I'm trying to keep it at an hour. I have no idea how long I've been painting. Um, I wish Suzanne could tell me. Let's see, I can check on my phone here. 45 minutes so far. How, how long? 45 minutes. Oh, okay. Um, I think we're good. Do, do we have a, I, I need Suzanne. I wish you could tell me if I had a, I'm trying to keep it in an hour. We're basically going to do the same thing for this one. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pretend we did the petals here because you're going to handle them the same way. I'm trying not to go too, too long, but this is a little, a little different from this one. And I'm just going to go ahead and pretend that we cleaned this out because I did want to show you all a little bit of um, 
what to expect on part two. I need a little bit more oil. Yeah, 45 minutes flew by. I'm trying to keep it at about an hour. Um, now, if I was actually teaching the class, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I mean, uh, not so much. I mean, somewhat. Um, but you know, you're just going to do the same thing on this side. The wet on the wet. I hope it's not too glary. I'll find out when I watch it back and I'll be like, oh no. <laughs> I hope it's not too glary. Deborah, can you see the white? It's or I know every once in a while if I turn it the wrong uh the wrong way. Can you see the the um paint on on there? Give me a thumbs up. All right, that's good. That's what I want to hear. I love Deborah's thumbs <laughs> today. <laughs> I'm going to come down here on this. It's it actually there is a unique little um, there. They they look like they have a it has a nose on it. I'll show you on the original when I I'm just going to come back with a little gray and a little bit of um, fuchsia again with that technique. If it's too much color, you can take it out. But it does have this weird little um, nose thing. It reminds me of a big, uh, it just looks like a flat nose right here. So the way I'm gonna get that bottom in, I'm gonna do a shaded load down here and then wipe it out. And then we're gonna attack this the same way we did that. And you don't have to get that much detail. Again, this is two, two paintings. I may have actually gone back and did one more shading. Most of the seminars that I teach with this is three days so we have three days i am going to go in here with a little bit of that gray and kind of really it's on that corner the corner edge and i'm actually going to try to get that little shape like if you're painting if those of you who have paint portraits it looks like a little nose. You can come back and wipe that out a little bit more. And you have another painting to get that in there. Instead of, um, you can pin work detail if you want, but I like to come up on the chisel edge and just get that little edge here instead of trying to use a liner brush on the edge of my wipeout tool. I am messy Marvin today. Let me tell you, I'm getting up all up in there. But I am painting in a little crunched area I want y'all to see. <laughs> but I'm gonna adjust. This is kind of fun. Um, what do I want to do? I want to go back and do this again which is, I would normally use white, but I'm gonna go into blonde flesh. Oh, I need a bigger brush. What am I, I can get in there, I need a broom here. I'll be all day with that little brush. This one's a little bit bigger, so it needs more and again i'm going to do a shaded load with the ruby and a little bit of black yeah, i'm in frame here i think we need a little bit more paint here up on that chisel edge and work it work it work it work it work it back and forth i love this this is my favorite part And I'm going to get this done. Again, I would refine it. 
I hope I have explained my technique. The rest is just going to take some practice. You do have another painting session to go back and deepen this. When this fires, it does, um, unless your ruby's like really dark, it does fire out a lot. Uh, that's why I go in and add just a touch of black. You could add a little bit of um, navy blue, but I like the black in it. Not too much. Be careful that you don't get too much. Um, again, for those of you who are more advanced painters, you can wait and do this on another fire, but I like wet and wet and repetition of color. Um, if you are brave, I, I like to go in and just wash a little bit of pink in there. Again, you've got in and out. You cannot go and work it because then you will end up with a gray color. Um, that is something you can try. Um, and master later on okay this is pretty much uh first fire i'll get the other plate that is finished it's the same just go back and rewind your um, recording and the same thing exact for these petals you're going to do for this part and for those little shaded areas i'm just trying to keep time concise let me go back to okay here's your first painting after it's fired, this is what's gonna look like. Um, I was brave because this particular plate, I was able to put the mother of pearl. I don't recommend, um, unless you have a super steady hand, you don't want the luster to touch this. So it would be better if you fired it and then went back with like a mother of pearl. You do not have to do this mother of pearl before we do the texture next week because I have um, actually, when I did, I'll show you the master plate. I thought I was just going to do the texture border and um, the enamel dots and it just needed something. So I actually went over it with the mother of pearl. So you can do it over and under. Um, so next uh, painting session, um, I'm gonna show you all a few options of what we can do for a border. Um, you could even do your orchids with just black. This was um, black and white. And that really shows up. It's really dramatic looking. Um, I, um, you could do your orchids in pink. And I did something really cool. Um, if you wanted to um, with, and not have a white border with mother pearl, you could go back over it with liquid gold, uh, liquid bright gold and get a really unique texture. Um, so you're not limited to the mother pearl. Um, next week, um, the, and I'll include the, uh, studies, um, your supply list or whatever. I use my Cricut cutter and cut vinyl. You could use vinyl stickers. Either one of them is just a resist. You could actually use um, the scratch technique if you have supplies for that. I have my armadillo oil and because it works. It scratches out and it, I'm able to clean the border out really easy. Um, I will offer another option. You don't have to do a border at all, but I'd love to show you all the technique. Um, I've done some other marbleized borders. I'm kind of wrapping it up right now. Suzanne, I wish I could talk to you. Um, if we don't go over too much, um, like I said, I'm trying to keep it in an hour. These are some other orchid plates. The marbleized board are super easy, five minutes. And it also complements, but I do like the texture. Um, but I think we can work in some texture, tech, some border techniques next week. But I just want to share with y'all some other ideas.
to finish off your piece. I think it would be a little bit busy. I like the simple elegance of the white flower with the white border, but then again, you could, you could, you have options. And I'm just giving you some ideas. Like I said, I did not realize how many orchid plates I did. This is another one with um, just a, a yellow banding. Oh, I know a lot of y'all have trouble with um, cadmium colors, but if you use them alone with a clean brush, they give a beautiful effect. And this is actually just a cropped of the version of the white orchid. So um, I think that's it for today. Can we, um, I don't know, I, I hate that. I can't talk to Suzanne. Um, you wanna unmute people and they can ask me any questions. Of, um, can you do that? Or can I, un I don't think I can unmute anybody or they can unmute themselves. I don't hear anybody. <laughs> I think they have to unmute themselves to ask the questions, Stephanie. That was fabulous, though. Thank you very, very much. Learned a lot. Deb, you don't have any questions? Uh, I don't, actually. Well, other than the medium that you're using, what um, type of me painting medium are you using in your little dish there? I use um, a high-grade motor oil, um, and then I add a little bit of capaba to it. It's a semi-open medium. I um, don't care for mineral oil in this area because if you leave your paints in the car or whatever, it gets oily and gummy. And 20 something years ago, my husband, I didn't, he was, they were actually rebuilding an airplane. My garage said, try this airplane oil and, and this high grade motor oil stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is wonderful. But there are a lot of other good, um, mediums out there you know ran knap if she was still in business had a really good mixing meeting because she tested hers in arizona that was able to withstand like 120 degrees without gumming up and i've had some of these paints uh, i i tend to mix them fresh but i have paints that are mixed up from like and these little metal pots for 20 years and they're still fresh but the mineral oil once it gets gummy Ugh, no. Um, another medium I like, I love Jane Marks's. I'm not trying to promote anybody here, but I have used hers and I do have tested other people's mediums. But I just find that that high grade motor that will not break down in the heat that we have here uh, in humidity um, works beautiful for mixing. And, um, but I like a little bit, a uh, little bit of semi, you know, a little bit more uh, setup time. Um, to paint a little bit um, wetter when you